Jonah Ballo here for Knicks.com. The squad knocks off the defending champs before an overtime thriller at MSG against the Wolves. And then the Knicks head to face the Sixers and on the road in Toronto. Don't miss the second of the action right here on Knicks All Access Weekly. The bright side to the Knicks matchup on Tuesday evening was the return to the friendly confines of New York City after a 10-day absence from Madison Square Garden. The Knicks are finally back at home after a long five-game western swing. The bad news was a monumental task on the docket with a showdown against the defending champs. We're playing against a really good team tonight that, uh, you know, they're the best at sustaining excellence and playing well. So it'll be a challenge for us, but the 10 guys we have, you know, they're up for it. and. You know, we're going to go out and still try to give ourselves a chance to win. Kawhi Leonard and Tony Parker combined for 17 points as the Spurs jumped out to a 29-25 advantage at the end of the first quarter and held the home squad to just 17 in the second period while leading by 10 at the half. Coming off that long road trip, that first game at home is, is usually tough. You know, guys are tired. Early on in the game, they kept on getting points in our paint. Uh, really just tried to make him take jump shots or contested shots and Tony Parker was getting in the lane he was getting a lot of free shots. First half Tony was just, was killing me and uh, just frustrated trying to stop him and then I uh, got a few stops on him and and I guess just just my offensive game just clicked and uh, started hitting a few shots. Over the final stages of the third quarter and early in the fourth period the Knicks put the champs on the ropes with a 10-0 run to knock the lead down to just one point. When we start facing some adversities we have a tendency to kind of let our energy drop. I thought we really did a good job of not doing that tonight. Trailing by two in the final seconds, Lou Amundsen found room to work in the paint. He delivered a clutch layup to tie the contest at 96-96 and provide some free basketball to the home crowd. Trail to Amundsen, Amundsen to cross the lane, he ties it up with 5.5 remaining. In the extra frame, the Knicks scored six of their eight points at the free throw line and effectively upended the defending champs as the New York backcourt of Langston Galloway and Alexi Shved combined for 43 points in the exhilarating home victory. It's a special win for the team. We need this and uh, it's a good win for the fans. I do think it symbolizes that we are growing, you know, that we are moving in a positive direction. We all came together, everybody uh, contributed and played hard and, and we got the result we wanted. Riding the momentum from a big win on Tuesday night over the reigning champion San Antonio Spurs, the Knicks return to the world's most famous arena for the season series finale against the Timberwolves. The Knicks take the floor, injury depleted like their opponent tonight, but coming off a very impressive 104-100 victory over the San Antonio Spurs in overtime. You win a game or you win a couple games and they really have no bearing on the next game. And, and so the mindset of being able to kind of clear your mind and, and move past you know where you've been and, and really focus on just tonight that's all the guys can control and then hopefully they'll they'll do that in almost identical fashion as the tuesday contest the knicks fell behind by eight points at the half as both teams posted 24 points each in the paint but the road team dominated the glass 18 to 10. early on uh jang was uh getting a lot of uh, offensive rebounds um their uh, wings were finishing in transition the first half we Came out with a little flat and um, just said we just wanted to make sure that that second half we were better. The tables turned in the third quarter when Langston Galloway erupted for nine points and held the Wolves to just 15. New York managed to tie Minnesota heading into the final quarter. So that's the first concept of the triangle. This, you know, the first open guy, you just hit him and, you know, thankfully those guys made, uh, made the shots and, you know, we're just moving the ball. We just wanted to pick up our level and just continue to just try to grind out and try to play harder. For the second straight night, the Knicks would decide their fate in the overtime session. As New York struggled from the floor, Zach Levine scored six in OT and lifted Minnesota to a 95-92 win. Once again, Galloway and Alexi Shved were the offensive catalysts with a combined 41 points, nine assists, and 12 rebounds. We definitely had to bring a lot more energy than we did tonight and, uh, and just continue to play defense. We got another one tomorrow, so just gotta come back after it. Back on the road for the Knicks in a short trip to Philly for the third matchup of the year against the young Sixers. 
Entering the contest, New York owned a 2-0 lead in the season series. We just figure out and find ways to win, and you know our opponent did it last night. And, uh, you know, we have to try and find a way to do that tonight. Here tonight at Wells Fargo Center, the third of four meetings between the teams, NBA action, the Sixers taking on the New York Knicks. Both teams shot 46% from the floor in the first 24 minutes, but 15 points from Nerland's Noel and 11 Knicks turnovers led to a six-point advantage for the Sixers at the half. After kind of floundering around there uh, for most of the first half, we put a decent stretch together and, and cut it to four. And then they had that basket at the end of the half. I think they kind of swung the momentum back. We had it going early, but then we just we went flat. And uh, that's the big thing. On the road, you have to be able to match other team intensity and then rise above that. The turnover issues eventually doomed the visiting Knicks. And Noel finished with 23 points, 14 boards, 5 steals, and 3 blocks in the 97-81 win for the Sixers. For New York, Schwed completed his four straight with at least 20 points, scoring 25 to go along with six boards in 34 minutes of action. We could have come out more ready. Uh, we didn't. Uh, we made a few runs, but it was too little. So uh, today they played better than us. We'll keep plugging. And, uh, you know, Sunday at 4 o'clock, we'll get another chance at it. With the John Top North, the Knicks landed in Toronto to conclude the two game trip and face a playoff bound Raptors squad seeking revenge from the late February defeat at the Garden. Despite the rough stretch in terms of the schedule, the intensity, the pace of the games, you know, it's all great opportunities for all of these guys. And I think they're just trying to make the most of it, you know, despite the outcome some nights. They're a playoff team. And so I think they have reasons to play, you know, inspired basketball no matter what. You know, our focus is more so on our mindset and, um, you know, we are expecting a really tough game today. Kyle Lowry out for the late afternoon contest, but DeMar DeRozan picked up the scoring slack by scoring 15 first half points while lifting Toronto to a 15 point lead. He's explosive, uh, real good athlete, and um, he gets to the basket very fast. So um, you definitely got to get back real quick and transition. They were just relentless to have, you know, weapons all over the floor. and. Uh, you know, they capitalized. The Knicks managed to cut the deficit to just six points early in the fourth after a three-point play from Ricky Lido, who made his Knicks debut for the Orange and Blue. I've seen an opportunity to go to the basket, and that's when I attacked Terrence Ross, so I got the one. It's always been my dream to play in the NBA, so I'm fulfilling my dream right now, and now it's time to thrive. Got the game to within two possessions, and, um, you know, tough time to foul and kind of give an end one and got it back up to nine. And then uh, I think those next four possessions, we couldn't, find a way to score. Despite a career high 24 points from Lance Thomas, the Raptors found the win column behind 23 from DeRozan in the 106-89 victory for Toronto. We fought back and, and gave ourselves a little bit of a chance, but you know, as we were losing bodies and, and also playing from behind all afternoon, uh, it was just a tough goal.